And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Big Josh McCarthy. Oh, sorry. Well, it's Big Somebody <laughs> or other, but welcome to the Weighing In Podcast. We've been sitting here arguing about the WWE, boxing, oh, MMA, all these different things. The one thing we know is Dave knows none of them. That's the one thing that is definitely <laughs> out there for sure. Oh. Podcast Dave, even though he claims to be a WWE yeah. fan, he doesn't even know who's on the card. He's a hardcore Jesus. He's a hardcore WWE fan. He's like, ah, oh, it's so great. It was so much better than all the fights tonight. And I'm like, who's on the card? Oh. Uh, well, you know. Uh, uh. <laughs> Logan Paul. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Oh man, so we we got a Logan's lot to got talk a fan. about. There's so much to talk about, you guys. Like, uh, I'm I'm like, we're not gonna even waste any time. John and I are actually filming this directly after the show, so you guys can get this first drop first thing in the morning, like we used to when I was living on the West Coast. Dave was living in the West Coast, and John and was you're living finding on the East it's Coast. A little bit different. Yeah, this whole thing with the um. The Central Time and the East Coast Time. This is bullshit. I feel like these people were getting screwed forever. What are West are West Coast people that big of a consumer that we should delay the rest of the world? Watch like it hits like midnight, one o'clock. I'm like, man, screw this. I got Here, shit I want to you do to think tomorrow. about this. I want you to think about this. It's it's simple economics. Okay, when you when you think about it. All right, let's take, you know, a. Eastern state. Let's go with North Carolina. How mm-hmm. many people live in North Carolina? Mm-hmm. I, I, one, don't one, I don't know. One point one, one eight million. How many people live in California? Oh shit! There's what eighteen million in fucking L.A. Gee, I was gonna say about thirty five million. No, there's not. Live in California? No, there's not. Uh, not no, no, California. LA. I said L.A. I said L.A. Yeah. I said know, LA. LA is L.A. is thirteen Eight. million. I so was, I said in California, 35 million, maybe 40, 40 million. probably 40. close. Yeah, probably yeah, close. That that right there tells you your economics that you were talking about. Nah, wow. Well, <laughs> this should like, you know, like I was in Guangzhou in China, right? In southeastern China. And uh, in Guangzhou, there's 25 million people just in that city. Yeah. Fucking uh, look insane. At Tokyo. Look where you, you were yeah. just at. Yeah, yeah. It's like 27 million. But people. it doesn't seem like it though. In Guangzhou, it does. Like in, in, uh, Japan, in Tokyo, it didn't seem that busy. I mean, like, I know in some areas it was, but like where we were at, it wasn't super busy. Like when I go to really? New York, when I go to New York, I'm like, gosh, don't touch me. Stop rubbing on me. Like stop. They walk past. They can't seem to avoid touching you. In, in Japan, they made sure that no one touched anybody. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're not there. I get it. I get it. It just didn't seem like it. It just didn't seem like it. All right, look, look. We've got a lot to talk about, but first, before we, we start talking about all this stuff, let's go to OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. Subscribe us over there. It is free. It is free. So let's go ahead and get jump right into these fights. What are we talking about first there, buddy? You want to talk about the Paul, uh, Jake Paul and Diaz fight? Let's talk about Jake Paul it. and Diaz since it's there. It's up on our thing. Let's go. Take let's a go. look at uh, the, the main event. Actually, it was, it was a, you know, a decent fight. You know, Jake Paul did a nice job of, of using his legs mm-hmm. to move himself out of problems at time to try to keep space so he could be effective. Nate did a great job of trying to close that space, fight in the phone yeah. booth. He just didn't throw enough. Yeah. He wasn't able to throw enough. It, a lot of it was like he had moments, but you could look. Everyone knows Jake for, or not Jake, but Nate for his, uh, Jake, Nate. <laughs> Jake, Nate. It's awesome. Everyone knows Nate for his cardio. Everyone knows that he can push the pace. Everyone knows he can get 185 in your grill. pounds. But it, uh, and that's the other thing. 185 pounds. You're having to weigh on them. You're having to push on them. You're trying to get them to move backwards, which he was able to do against uh, Jake several times in the fight. Oh, he most, had some. Most he had some fight. big moments in the fight that I I can't believe in the I couldn't believe the commentators like, oh yeah, but he's not really doing any damage. Not really. I'm like he's hurting him. He's that's making Sean Jake. Porter. Yeah, he's. That's a, Tom Porter, he's a pure goddamn, he's a hardcore boxer. You know, come on, he's, he's not going to go any other way. You can't blame Sean. Well, they're all going to go towards Jake right now because Jake's claiming he's just pure boxing. But then when he hold makes it, that it. transition to MMA. Dan Hardy at the beginning said that oh, Nate Diaz is going to back up, back up, back up. I was like, I don't know. Where the, there was a lot where of. Nate, where, did, where did Dan Hardy get that one? There from? was a lot of things. There was a lot of things that uh, Ariel and, and uh, Dan Hardy were talking about. I was like, what are you talking about? I, I just, it just, it blew my mind, the two of them. And I like, I like Dan a lot. I think Dan's breakdowns of his fights when he has, Great breakdowns. when he takes time to look over his breakdowns in MMA fights, I think he's fantastic. But some of the stuff, 
uh, that they were saying about Nate, like in terms of just the way his game plan is, the way he fights, like how come he, how come Nate's not utilizing his jab or this and that? I'm like, it just little things, and I'm like, well, Nate's got a good jab. Look, MMA is different. How come MMA fighters don't use? How come MMA guys don't go to the body? Well, let me explain it to you, because it was like, oh well, it's just an underutilized weapon because they give out some ridiculous answer and go back and listen to it, but. I'm in my mind. I'm like, well, we don't dip to the body that much because we lean our head that side. Lean your head to a kicking to, side. to a knee or a kick, <laughs> exactly. you know. And th there's reasons why. Like, you know, it's like th that type of thing. Um, it's just kind of like those. How come they don't move their head as much? Well, because when I move my head offline too much, like boxers do, they dip their head down by people's waist. If I oh, do that, that, you're getting clinched and you're getting need. There's reasons why I don't do that. And so, um, what do you? The fact that like that arrows even asking that i'm like you've been in the game for a long long time why are, like how do you not know this anyways i i don't want to be bagging on him too much because everyone thinks i just don't like him and i i do actually kind of like him yeah what nate needs to do what nate was doing was perfect he was smuggling the punches look the the knockdown to me was more of an off balance knockdown nate's never he got hurt, he got hurt a little bit though john but look <laughs> It rattled his cage. It did. It did rattle him a little bit. But I'm saying, like, it literally was like a knockdown. He hit a, a knockdown off balance. It was more of an off balance knockdown. Because also, too, when he hit, he went to post his hands, and it was the momentum that took him forward. It's no different than the momentum that took him forward that knocked him down. So when he went to kind of come up too fast, it, he ended up rocking forward, kind of like through the under parts of the rope. Nate, in in this in this stuff that they're you know in terms of like the boxing portion of it all, he fought a very good fight. The output should have been a little bit more. But look, when you're dealing with someone who's bigger, it's hard to have that amount of output. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and like, I'm not going to sit here and continue to like defend him. There was mistakes that he made in the fight. Um, but I got to be honest. He is this. Let's let's go ahead. And we've continued to say this over and over and again. But I want to make it very clear. He is this smaller guy, the older guy. He is, it's all the those, it, the slower guy. All of those things play a factor. How old is Jake? 25, 26, maybe? 24. 24. 24 year old Jake Paul. He's fast. He's bigger. Okay. Um, he's stronger. Um, and he's younger. The, all those things play a huge factor in this, in the combat sport. Yeah, okay. Man. And look, the only thing that Nate had going on over him was the experience. Oh, 26. Sorry. 26. 26. Sorry. 26. But look, he had the he had the experience over Nate, or Nate had the experience over Jake, and that was it. That's all. Uh, and, and the experience wasn't in boxing. It was like, sure, he's yeah. trained with top level boxers, but let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. He didn't have as much experience in the actual ring in terms of boxing against other boxers. He's got boxing yeah. with guys that he's pro boxers, Andre Ward, other guys that they've sparred and other guys they've worked with. I, I don't want to I don't want to sound like I'm homering for uh for Nate. I'm a big I am a big fan. Everyone knows that. Go, I'm a big Nate. Go Nate ahead and say it. I'm you a scrap are back. homering and it's okay. I, I I'm not trying to homer for him. I'm simply just stating the facts. And the facts, if that becomes being a homer, then then I guess I'm a homer. Call it what it is. You we continue to support what Jake is doing, and I think a lot of people are frustrated because it's like, look, you mm. keep picking guys that are smaller, that are older, that are this, that are that. It gets to a point where, like, especially well, when you're listening to him talk, he's like, oh, well, you know, like, oh, I'm blessed to be here. You are blessed to be here. I think you've done a great job promoting yourself. I think you're a hell of a promoter. I think you're coming in the tank. I think that was awesome. I think it was great. Whatever it was. I mean, like, it's it's a gimmick. It's all a gimmick. It is, it's a YouTube thing, right? And I'm okay doesn't with it. doesn't matter. It was a tank. It was a tank. <laughs> like, I'm not mad at that. I'm like, yo, this is pretty dope. But all of those things, right? But at the end of the day, you're not fighting people your age, your size, your not even like your your talent, your sport. Yeah, your sport. Your exactly sport. And so that's I think where the frustration level has been, where well, it, there okay. could be a lot more. But let me ask you this: R rate your rate where you believe Jake Paul actually lies in the boxing world. He's not like he's a decent boxer. He's decent. He's got decent skills. I would never take that away from him. And, and I've had friends that were, I have friends that are world champions in boxing who have sparred with him. They said, look, he's, he's a decent boxer. Mm -hmm. He's not great, but he's a decent boxer. He can box. And he showed that, I thought, even in this fight with his footwork as far as getting himself out of problems, moving himself around the, 
the ring the way he needed to to gain space and everything. He's a decent boxer, but he's never like he can't fight against good boxers. Yeah, he's gonna lose. He, he lost to Tommy Fury, and, and I'm I don't want to take anything away from Tommy Fury. I thought he fought really well. He showed that he can box, but he's not a great boxer. He's not yeah. his brother. His brother is a great boxer. Okay, Terence Crawford is a great boxer. Yeah, Errol Spence is a great boxer. Jake Paul doesn't belong in the it, it, he doesn't even belong in that conversation. So I don't blame Jake Paul for trying to set up fights with people that he should beat. Yeah. Based upon his boxing skills, what he's been doing, his athleticism, his age and everything. His job is to make money. Yeah. Can't knock him for that. And he's doing it. I'm not knocking him for that. Okay, I, I can't. You know, I know yeah. I, to sit there and say, "Well, he needs to fight." You know, I mean, he, he at his weight, he'd be fighting either cruiserweight or coming up on heavyweight. Okay, in boxing, really? Yeah. How do you think he would do against the top boxers? Come on, you know, it's not it's not going to be pretty. So I can't blame him as long as he can keep on selling. Mm-hmm. these cards and getting paid and, and going on pay-per-view and people, I don't blame him. No, I, I agree. I agree. Look at, look, we're going through this right now too with uh, what Floyd Mayweather, he's making millions off of fighting guys at YouTube. people. And I, I don't even yeah. know half of these YouTube people. I've never even heard of them, you know? And I'm saying like, it's just, <laughs> it is what it is. You know, um, the only reason why I know Aaron Chalmers is he fought in the, he fought in Bellator for a little bit. Cause we had oh, fights yeah. in Newcastle where he was from, where yeah. he was on the, uh, like Jordy the, Shore. Yeah, Jordy Shore, which is like the version of the UK Jersey. version of Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Yeah. And so um that's one reason why I know him. He's a super nice guy, by the way. Um, but not on the level of someone like a Floyd Mayweather. Oh my god. Uh, you know what I mean? So all of these guys, it's it really just comes down to I, I'm kind of, I'm done with the gimmick fights. I really was I was into the the Nate one because I wanted to see Nate and see how he did. And I've never seen him box before outside of like being inside the, the cage with him, but that's about it. You know, um I've seen mo I've seen uh, clips of him boxing and sparring with some people that I know, um, yeah. you know, and uh, that's about it though. But overall, Jake, just keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Like I got, I got, I got to salute you. Okay, yeah. you're making money, you're doing a good job, and uh, you know your your skill level is is not to be not to be. I'm not trying to down talk it. It's not it's to be just, scoffed at. It's not to be it's, scoffed at, you, man. You can box. I've seen some guys that have spent years <laughs> trying to learn how to box, and they still are not at his level years. Yeah. And I'm talking about these are athletes too. They're just, they just don't, sure. they can't pick it up. They just can't yeah. get the fluid motion of it all. It's not for everyone. Yeah. It's not for everyone, man. And, uh, and he obviously look, and one of the biggest things when you're talking about, look, it's one thing to say that you're a YouTube guy, you can fight and this and that. It's another thing to get in there. 10 rounds. It's a long time. You don't yes, realize how long it is. It feels like fucking forever. I know. I, I know we fought five minute rounds, but man, Three minute rounds, it does it does something to the people that you're sparring. They make they want to push the pace a little bit longer at a minute and a half, you know, at two minutes. They want to go harder at those two minute marks. They know they only they, they have another thirty seconds before their their round ends up and they end up they get a little bit of a rest, you know, a minute long rest. Yeah. All of those things are a huge factor. Um you your output's harder because the rounds are shorter and but you get more rest. Uh it's it's uh he's doing a great job. He's he's a fantastic athlete. He's a fantastic business person. He understands what he's doing. He's got a team around him, apparently, that's doing a pretty damn good job because, you know, I mean, they're picking out the right people. They understand. Tommy Fury was not the right person. <clears throat> Tommy Fury was his size, was faster, hit harder, all of those things. And a bigger guy, or about the and same his size, age. basically the same size and his age. Yeah. He's so, younger. yeah, there's a lot. Look, overall, though, I mean, my perception of the fight was we expected it to go the kind of the way that we expected it to go. Was Jake starting off hard and fast, fast. and furious, and uh, the first three rounds, I expected, damaging Nate a little bit. Yep, and I expected Nate to come along around four, five, six, seven, and start taking over. I mean, he had those moments. I think he won round four. I think is what it was. Then he lost round five and he got dropped, so that put him yep. down to five one, uh, whatever it was. And then so I had it basically five one going in. Then the rest of the rounds were kind of like toss up rounds. I had Nate winning, you know, I think two more of those rounds. I didn't hear. I, I turned the TV off before the judge's decision because I know who won. But what were the final scores? Did you hear it? 97, 92, and 90, 98, 91 on two. Oh, wow. That far out. Huh? That big of a gap. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. I believe. Interesting. 
All right. Well, hey, that was a good, that was a good fight. Uh, any other fights on this card? Like, I want to give a, uh, yes. Chris Avila, man. He fought a fucking great fight, a fantastic fight. I was so surprised to be honest. I know he's slower than Jeremy. I know he doesn't have as much power as Jeremy, but his relaxation that this is if you're a young fighter coming up, take a look at the way he fought against someone who's got power, someone who is same size by the way, someone who's got power, same size. Somebody who sure can deliver it and is fast. Jeremy Stevens' power, it's got speed and explosive, all those things. Chris just learned how to smother the punches, make him fight in a phone booth, hit him with the long jabs, kept him on the outside, hit him with the long uh, straight lefts. All of those things are so frustrating to the fighter. He's either all the way out where he can hit you or all the way in where he can just dirty box you. Whereas Jeremy was all the way in, struggling to get his hard shots off because he's having a hard time fighting in a and phone booth, missing on the outside, and missing on the outside because he couldn't get he couldn't get the reach and the range enough. Chris Avila, man, you fought uh, he you fought a dog fight, man. You fought a great fight. Good job, good for you. Happy for you, man. Good. I mean, it says a lot because that lets you know right away that these two sports are completely different, completely different. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, they're not even close. Uh, is there any other fights on here you want to talk about? Yeah, I think I, I, you got to give it up. I, you know, Heather Hardy fought in uh, MMA. Amanda Serrano fought in MMA. But and you, but you really got to give it up. Heather Hardy went out there, and I just want to say, look, she showed balls. Yeah. And she she fought her ass off. She was getting peppered. Her face was getting just used as a damn punching bag for a lot of that. And then she kept coming forward. She kept trying. She kept fighting. She gave it everything that she could uh give it in there and yeah you know, hats off to her great job just a yeah. great job yeah I, there was a moment i think in the third round i was like i don't think it's gonna go the distance and then I didn't you know either. and then i think amanda just i don't i don't want to say amanda lightened up i'm gonna slow say down that she that she just started pot shot and started just kind of yeah. like picking and choosing her shots not putting herself in any jeopardy and uh i don't know i think and i also believe that she has a ton of respect for heather hardy there's and no so, doubt. Yeah, and, and you can hear in the put in the pre interviews, you can hear it, you know, in the conversations afterward, like all of those things. She's got a ton of respect for her. And so I, I admire fighters like that. Amanda Serrano's gonna be something to mess with. I'm looking forward to seeing her in the PFL. Uh yeah. doing MMA. I'm excited for that. Good for her. Absolutely. Good for her. Uh all right, that's gonna wrap up our uh Paul uh Jake Paul and Nate Diaz uh fights. What else you got for us, Dave? We'll uh, go to the UFC. All right, let's go to the UFC real quick. Before we go to the UFC, make sure you guys go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. It is free. We are the first podcast they have ever sponsored and worked with, and we are continuing to hopefully be that for the next couple of years. And uh, look, they have really hit their next level in terms of all the athletes that have joined there, and we want to continue to tell you guys, check them out, look them up. Paige Van Zandt is on there with her husband, Austin Vanderford. MVP is on there. You've got uh, Brent Primus is on there. Uh, what are some other fighters? Chris that you, Cyborg, Chris Anthony Cyborg, Pettis. And who else? Anthony Pettis. Anthony Pettis just actually signed recently. Uh, Luke yep. Rockhold, you know, the sexy son of a bitch, Luke Rockhold. He's on there as well. And, uh, you know, just, you know, he's just always with his shirt off, you know, showing off his muscles, fucking just slanging dick. That's all he does. So, anyways, <laughs> that guy is fucking great. He's on there, though, too. So, you want to check out Luke Rockhold? He's up there as well. Onlyfans.com slash Wayne and subscribe. Luke so Rockhold slinging dick. That, yeah, that's, that's where that's I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to avoid that. He's a good looking guy. You can't be mad at it. If you are, you're I'm just not being mad salty. At him. I'm all not right. Mad at him. Corey Sanhagen versus Rob Font. What you got for us, buddy? Oh my God! I was really looking forward to this fight, but it it, it did exact. He did exactly what he should have done, Josh. Yeah. And, it's, and he was getting Bisping was all up his ass, and it's like, why are you upset for someone fighting the actual fight that he should have fought against the opponent that he has? And he's winning every round and winning every second of every round, just about. But I understand where, you know, Mike wants more action. He wants more excitement and stuff. But it just wasn't meant to be with this fight. But I, I, I really give credit to Rob Font. I thought Rob Font did a fantastic job of defending himself on the ground. I thought his elevator sweep really, you know, he was working it the whole time. He used, you know, a butterfly guard. He used it well for the most part. I thought that Corey did a great job of crushing it down, keeping his weight over the top, making it very difficult for anyone to move him. I thought that Rob Font got out of a couple of submissions that were tight, you know, didn't give in. He just, he 
just wasn't meant to fight the type of fight yeah. that Corey Sanhagen made him fight. Yeah, what are you going to do? I want to be honest, man. Rob Font was way better on the ground than I ever gave him credit for. Absolutely. I owe this guy a ton of respect, man. Like, I got to be 100% up front. Like, hey, bro, you outpunted the coverage. You were fucking way better on the ground than I ever thought you were. I mean, fantastic. I mean, I know it didn't go your way. I know you lost these rounds. But here's the thing. In the techniques he was using, and when I'm watching, I'm going, man, it's hard. You can't hit an elevator sleep on someone who's 5'11 and you're, you know, you're 5'8 oh, or whatever it is. So like, long. You've got, like, look, I would try to hit certain sweeps on Rockwell because him and I were grappling partners for quite a quite a few years. And I mean, we would train together all the time. You just can't do it. Certain sweeps no. you just can't do against somebody with that type of length. You know, and I'm not talking about his dick. I'm talking about his legs and his arms. Okay. I'm like, that's well, you are. You are <laughs> I'm on, on the fire pole. tonight. Hey, you this, are on the pole. This is what happens, man. When I have to stay up until fucking this late, I'm, you know, John, I'm, you know me, I'm an early riser, bug drinks or no drinks. I'm an early riser. And, uh, man, this is crazy. So it's just funny. Cause I was watching Rob do, try to hit these sweeps, trying to hit the elevator sweep, trying to come underneath and try to do the X guard kind of a little bit, try to get these positions. Those are positions that are super hard to get against someone who has length. They've got the the long arms, they've got the long legs, they can hip down and base out on you. They've got that kind of like four angles they can touch, you know, four yeah. four possess four uh Well as long anchors. as as long as you got three three points of contact, yeah. you got balance, and that's exactly what Corey did the entire time. Pretty much, yeah. And then you know, and here what happens is this everyone, like you're talking about with Bisbee, getting upset, getting all mad about all this. But guess what? How many times have we seen two wrestlers? And so end up canceling each other out, and they end up fucking just standing and banging. I don't hear anyone complaining about that. But guess what? You have two strikers, and they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Corey's like, I can take this guy down easily. Cool. We kept getting the takedowns. I can hold him down. Rob's like, okay, sure. Him. I got taken down. I can grapple with you, too. The two of them took well, – Rob was put in position to basically be on, on the bottom, but he did way better than I expected him to do on the bottom. And Corey did a great job of – Take, make, taking the easiest way and the less the lay, the least amount of chance and not uh, how much damage control. none how much damage zero okay. well, zero and as as a, and see this is what people do. people want the they want the slobber knocker they want that you know crazy war and yeah I do too but that's not the job of the fighter the right. job of the fighter is to deliver punishment yeah. without being punished. That's exactly what Corey Sandhagen was doing. Yeah. If you're successful with it, God bless you, man. You know, I thought it was a nice win by Corey. I thought it was a very intelligent fight. It, it probably didn't live up to the excitement that some people were expecting, but that's just, you know, that's the fight game sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Next fight. Yeah. Now that this one I'm going to talk to you about because yes, sir, go ahead and say it. I was right. Tatiana Suarez is on fire were we, were we both right yeah yeah yeah. Don't I get some but, love but i was right first <laughs> really i was right first you really? still like andrage and i understand it but i was right first i like andrage because the way she fights <laughs> fucking just aggressive and throws hands she didn't fight aggressive and throw hands today and she got she was choked in trouble out. no she was I, in trouble yeah i mean like yeah. look i i just look at tatiana suarez along with patchy mix the two of them right now them being a i consider them basically like a mma power couple right now boy the two of them are, are making each other better the two of yep. them feed off of each other i have never and i've been around fighters that have had girlfriends that were other fighters but i've never been around a female that came out and just said straight up what she said to me at the last fight right after right after patchy mix knocked out um stots she, I saw her in the back of my head, congratulations. She's like, you guys, she's like, everyone doubted him. Everyone did this. She's like, we all knew. We all knew he was going to beat him. We all knew he was going to knock him out probably. We all figured he'd submit him easily. But if this fight stayed on the feet, it was a good chance. Gonna... She said it with such confidence in her man. I was like, all right, you guys are operating on a different level of confidence than a lot of other people. It's not just arrogance. It's confidence. It's like, no, we're good. We're getting better on the feet. We saw a little bit of that tonight. With the kicks and the hands, and she had a couple good uh, straight jabs that were landing and snapping on Draw's head back. I mean, I thought she fought a great fight. You know, the takedowns were you know weren't as clean as she would have liked, but man, once she got to the the ankle pick, the, she shot in on the on the double, went switched yep. to the single, then pulled into the ankle. She did everything right. The beautiful man. takedown. Great job. It was beautifully done. And then the way when she decided to go for the guillotine, 
And you saw, you know, when she brought the leg up and over, and you yeah. saw her just working her hands slower and slower to get to that S grip to pull it in. And you look and you go, she knows. Yeah. She knows exactly where she's at, what she's got, and what she's going for. And the, the, she's got a confidence. Yeah. And this is now back at her normal weight that she was fighting at before, 115 pounds. Mm -hmm. She would have fought her last one up at 125. So now she's back at that 115. I want to see her against Wei Lee. Yeah. I want to see that. I think one more fight. Dave, can you pull up the rankings for that division for the strong? She doesn't need one more fight. I You're know. always you I are know. the one you are the one more fight man. I am the one more fight she man. She doesn't need it. She doesn't need it. Where are we at? Can we see? Can you blow that up a little bit? What why not why not her and Rose? Well, Rose is fighting coming up. Who's She's Rose? She's got fighting? a fight coming up. Uh Let's see. She rose this fight and where is Suarez? I Mano. There. I didn't even see Perot. her in there. She's Rose is fighting Mano in uh, Paris, I believe. Ah, okay. All right. Well, there you go. Yep. All right. Well, let me see who else is up there. I mean, there's no one else. Where's is, Where's is Tatiana? I don't even see her in there. There she is, number ten. Well, I just catapulted her up to number five. <laughs> I mean, the the worst person they could probably have her fight is uh, Amanda Lemos. She's fast. She's explosive. She's got good takedown defense. She's super I'm quick. I, I get it. I'm get, sorry. Right I now? No, 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 no. I get Amanda Lemos, saying. good. She's going to get beat. I'm not saying she's not going to get beat. John. I'm saying that the speed, the power, the hands. It's going to give her yeah. Tatiana a little those bit. Are, of those are all those things that can beat you. I understand. No, you're, you're I, not. I, you're I not giving me enough credit, saying. John. You're not giving me enough credit. I, <laughs> I know what. Look, if it was going to be Jan, I'd say, okay, look, all those things, the power, the speed, like all the, like, no, it's not going to work against her. If you, even Rose, I think Rose, she's not fast enough. All those things, the takedowns will come a little bit easier for Tatiana. With Lemos, she's really fast. She's good at circling off. She's got great footwork. I yeah. look at her and I'm like, oof, that's a tough fight. That's a tough fight. All right, we're, we're betting a steak dinner on that one. Well, I didn't say I wasn't I, going with I'm Tatiana. I just I'm always said it was go, like, I'm always going with my, my Okay, okay, my, we'll go steak dinner. As long as, long as, it, as long as the bet is, if it's a tough fight, I win. There you go. Makes it easy. Tough fight. If well, it's a wait, tough fight, on. I win. I'll tell you what. There you go. That's good. A, Thanks, John. Thanks no, for accepting. I love that you accepted the goes to a decision. Bet. Steak dinner, Dave. If you heard it goes first. to a decision. If it goes to a decision. If it goes past round it's, three, it's a tough fight. And it's... Shut up. It's a tough fight past round three. No, 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 yeah, no. Because a real fight would have ended in three rounds. You're not... You, you, you see, now <laughs> here you go. You're trying to... No, John's trying to bullshit. change the bet. This is what John I'm does. Not trying, I'm He's constantly you more. trying to change I the bet. I gave you your fighter, his, Amanda the, Lemos. You wanted Amanda Lemos? Take her. John. I'll take Suarez. And normally, it's whosoever fighter wins. And I'm even capable of telling you, I'll say that if it's goes to a decision and it's not 30 27 across the board you win no it'll probably be a main event john so if it's not 30 27 of course it won't i'll win well if it's a main event then i win event, that if it's no, a main john event, made the bet 30 50, 27 45. john made the bet it's gotta be 30 27 if it's a five round fight <laughs> it won't be 30 27 no matter all right. <laughs> you're, so you're like working with a child. <laughs> Next fight. No, because you constantly try to you're change like, the bet to I, fit your what you want. No, no, no. I know, I'm bro, giving you. you I'm, you're, I'm not changing you the bet. Are I'm the taking guy, someone. You're the, that's my winner. You, so I'll tell you what. You get Lemos. John, I get I get Suarez. That's it. John. Whoever I wins, talked, wins. I, I, it's I, over now. I told you, John, no, 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 what I used over. to do to guys at AKA, and now you're trying right, to do so it to me all the time. So now we have Dustin the Hanyak Jacoby. Up against Kenny and Jukua. Oh man, I, I thought it was a bad stoppage. It not was. that I didn't. Not that I think it might have changed anything. I'm not saying that the fight would have changed. I'm not saying that Dustin Jacoby won in a one. But when Kennedy went down, he's facing. You see him, mm -hmm. and he starts to cover. But all the shots were hitting his arms, Josh. Yeah, they're hitting his arms. You, as the referee, you've got to look and see where are those shots landing. If they're landing on his arms, that's called defense. That's good. When they start bouncing off of his skull, 
okay, stop the fight. I have no problem with it. But they weren't. Yeah. Especially when you get to the point where these two guys are, they're just under the co-main event. They're on the main card. You've got to And they're both two. right in the, right at that point of yeah. in, making the rankings or, or just yeah. made them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to give these guys a little bit more love and respect. So, and this has to do with referees knowing their fighters. If you don't Kennedy know who Kennedy goes they down are, how often in the first round? I think I've seen him go down three, two times? Two times. Three times. Three times. I've only okay. seen him go down twice, I think. Look, bottom line is, is you, as, a, as a ref, you got to know your fighters. You got to know what they're capable of. I mean, can you imagine how many times Nate Diaz fights would have been stopped early? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make Like, you've got to know who your athletes are inside that cage when you're refereeing. And so, um, you know, Kennedy is someone that he's he's known to, like, start, start off slow, get dropped, come back, dominate, drop people with knees, smother them, whatever it is. Like, he just have, finds a way to win. You've got to know. Uh, Jacoby, though, you can't knock him, man. He did his job. No, no. He came out, back circled against the fence, back foot touched the fence, boom, straight right, right down the pipe, right on the button, right below the nose almost and into that little lip part. And those are the worst fucking punches. They that suck, hurts. man. Yeah. It always feels like you split your lip when you're fighting, even when you got a mouthpiece on, and it sucks. Fucking sucks. <laughs> I will say Gary Copeland, the referee, he's, look, he's a good referee. He does a good job. Most mm -hmm. like, just pulled the trigger a little bit early on that one, in my opinion. Just in my opinion. Well, you know what though? The next guy, I'm 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 a fucking Diego Lopez fan now. Oh, I'm a Diego. Dude. I was a fan before, but right now I was now, a fan on his first one. I mean, yeah, I was a fan before from his first fight, but guess what? Yep. You know, when they come in on short notice, they got nothing to lose. They can impress yep. easily, or they can let you down pretty easily. It's one of the yeah. two. Well, he he, he definitely impressed, impressed me time. in that. He impressed big time in that first fight. In this fight, though. I didn't know what to expect. Is he going to just like, okay, look, they have me back on the main card. Like I'm the man you know, sometimes fighters let that shit get to them. I'm here on the main card because I did such a great job on a short notice fight. This, this kid came out. He understood. This kid can He's, fight. He can fight. And then not only can he fight, he can, he takes chances. That jumping oh, triangle yeah. he did. Like I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you dumb, you dummy. And no, then as he started, it, he started you, you locking the legs. I'm going, way to go, dude. I was like, okay, that's cool because I've done it before in a fight yeah. against Rob McCullough. And I was thinking to myself, I hit the ground and I didn't get it. I'm like, you dummy. So now I'm thinking the same thing when <laughs> he did it. For him. Yeah. But he locked it in. He was able to kind of get the, the hand stuck in there a little bit. And um, look, you can see that this young man is focused on things that are important in his life. Winning. And seems to be taking care of his parents. I heard some of the commentary and they talked about that, you know, he went off and he bought his mom whatever she wanted for her house. Like all the little things. His last paycheck, he's got a, he got a, he got a uh, $50,000 bonus last time. Right. So he took his half of his money that he won, whatever he got paid. And he took the other 50000 and he went back to his mom's and he basically bought whatever she wanted for her house. Good for him, man. Good. I like to hear shit like that. Those yeah. are the things that let you know, like, hey, we're not, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. Like want to buy a Bentley and like want to buy a Porsche, a Ferrari, you know, I mean, and those type of things. And uh, he came in, he came in and performed great job, great submission, tight triangle at first. Then he switched to the arm bar. Beautifully done. Nice work. Nice work for sure. Got a lot of love for him. I can't wait to watch this kid fight again. Yeah, it was an outstanding performance. And look at Gavin Tucker's a good fighter. He's a solid fighter and just systematically from the time that he jumped into that position just slowly started making little tweaks, tightened things up, finally got it to where he got, you know, grabbed the shin, pulled that down. And once he did and he got top money, yeah, very nice job. And then I, I, he's one of those ones you're going to be looking forward to watching him in the future because he goes for it. Yep. That's what you like to see. Exactly. Next fight. Tanner Bozer. What's that? Next Tanner fight. Tanner Bozer against Mr. Kamur. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. Kamura can take some shots. Dude, he has yeah. a chin. Tanner Bozer hit him with everything but the goddamn stools mm -hmm. that are sitting outside the damn cage. And that kid was still fighting. You know what? Yeah, he lost. But, man, I'll tell you what. He is tough. Mr. Kamura, you are a fighter. Like, I mean, when I think of guys that I could hit that many times would be like podcast Dave, but like podcast Dave would go down. So in this look, he took some big shots. He also delivered some big shots. 
Yeah, Tanner go. took some Tanner took some shots as well. He got hit with some clean shots, got spun around mm-hmm. a little bit. Didn't know which way he was supposed to be fighting a couple times. The two of them had a knockdown drag out. It just came down to Tanner was the more composed fighter, the more relaxed fighter, and that's when experience plays a factor. And he was able to land the harder shots as the fight went on. And it was a good fight. It was a really good fight. I wouldn't say it was back and forth. But there was moments though where Kamur had some landed some clean oh, yeah. shots. He, like, had, oh, he had his moments. This could start to take over. You could start to take this fight over at the momentum, and then it just boom. And then Tanner came back and hit a beautiful shot, and it was like okay, it changed the momentum back. But it was it was a back and forth battle. But then at the end of the day, it was Tanner was actually winning majority of the time. Oh yeah, good stuff. But man. great fight, entertaining as hell. Another really good fight, I thought. Uh, Bahamondes against Klein. You know, Ludovic Klein. He's talented. He is very good in all ranges. Mm-hmm. His stand up is clean. He uh I thought he fought very composed. You know, uh Bohamondes in the beginning he took a couple of shots, you go, he might not make it through yeah. this fight. He was in trouble a little bit. He gutted his way through it, actually had his moments where he was doing well, but overall clean, easy win for Klein. Yeah, the next fight you and I talked to in the pre in the uh, midweek show was uh, Kyler Phillips and Barcelos. Yeah. Good fight, back and forth. Uh, yep. Phillips though just edged him out a little bit more flashy, a little bit more of the cleaner, harder shots, a little bit more elusive. We're getting hit with the big shots until the third round. Yes, yes. Yeah. But you know, first and second round definitely. But when you're someone like Kyler Phillips, right? What happens when you're moving that much in the first two rounds? What happens in the third? You get tired. Right. Barcelos was just tracking after him, trying to land the big shot, trying to land the yeah. big shot. Wasn't able to try to get the takedown, trying to land the big shot. Just wasn't able to do it until the third round started landing the big shots. But by then, the, you know, he'd already lost the first two rounds, and that's what happens. But overall, I thought that was a fantastic fight also. Uh, how fast Kyler Phillips is with his spinning kicks. You know, I was like, holy shit. Like, I could never do that, John. I try to do it, man. I was like all off balance. <laughs> Get off balance. Yeah, yeah. Like, I always felt like I had to put my hand down. It just was. You got to be one of those guys that can spin on a dime yeah. to be able to do those well. I look so stupid out there you doing spin that. Spin in shit. the same spot. Javier used to have me try hitting the pads like that every once in a while. I'm like, hey, throw me the spinning kick. I throw it. He's like, all right, let's not do that. <laughs> I was like, all right, at least you know my limits, buddy. At least we're on the same page. I love, I love that about him. Uh, oh, man. Uh, next Carlos- fight. Carlson Harris against Jeremiah Wells. Jeremiah Wells came out. He was on fire. He was he was owning that fight. Owning it. All the way up until, well, yep. he got caught in an anaconda choke, and he went to sleep. And it, I you. thought, yeah, yeah, what's that? First round, 10-8, because that, that choke was tight. It was tight. It was on good, but... I don't know. There was some gurgling going on there. There, a lot there of was it. definitely some gurgling. I would say it was a 10 a round. I, look, at, let's be honest. Jeremiah Wells was going to win that fight until he went to sleep. Yeah. And it was, I actually thought the way he had his arm, I go, he might make it through this. And then I'm looking at him and you could see he just all yeah. of a sudden watched Whoop. his body go whoop. And I went, he's asleep. That's <laughs> uh, great win for, for Harris. He really, uh, you know, he gutted through a lot of hard situations in that fight. Yeah. And, you know, when he had his opportunity, he made it count. So, nice, nice win. I was, a, I was a purple belt. And um, I was training. I was a purple belt under Dave Camarillo. And we were training. There was this, like, chubby kid. He was a brown belt. He came down from uh, Modesto. I can't remember his name. But he trained with this. He trained out of this other Josh guy's. Rosenthal. No, he was a chubby <laughs> Mexican kid. Hey, you said chubby kid. <clears throat> chubby man. Mexican guy out of Modesto. Oh, and he man. trained with this kid named Patriot that I used to love training with. It's a kind of taller, muscular, stockier kind of kid. Kind of built a little bit like Luke Rockhold. Maybe not as tall. Maybe only like 6'1", 6'2", versus Luke was like 6'3". You know, maybe pushing 6'4". Um, this kid, and I was... We, we were going, and he was a little heavier than me, a little shorter, stark, starkier than me. And he just, and I was, I was, you know, doing really well. I was purple. He was brown. I'm like, I got this kid. I'm, I'm working him. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm like, I'm better than you. I was more of an athlete. This kid stepped over on a fucking baseball choke. Next thing you know, I'm fucking, I'm waking, waking up. Waking up. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck happened? They're like, bro, you went to sleep. I was like, all I remember is him stepping, like fucking yeah. stepping over my leg and sitting out on me, and that was it. I don't remember shit. I don't, they're like, bro, you didn't even try to tap. You were out, out. and it was I was out quick <laughs> like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> and then when I'm watching the Harrison Wells fight, I'm like, this dude's out already. He was out, out quick. Man. He as soon as he oh, sat yeah. back, boom, and hit the 
Oh man, not sat back, but as soon as he stepped over on it or sat to it or whatever on the on the choke, I was like, oh, it he's done. He's like, <sighs> that's how I felt. I was watching that. It just gave me flashbacks of my guy. Oh man. I never got my redemption either, John. Pisses me never. off. Never, never. Really? Nah, we 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 trained in the same locations a couple of times. We never trained against each other again. I think he avoided me. I think he knew I was going to come after him. Son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> Billy Quarantillo against Damon Jackson. Like this is a hell of a fight. Damon Jackson came out and was really looking good, and Billy Quarantillo doing the the normal thing that he does. He gets through the first round and he keeps putting pressure on people. And eventually he starts to break him. And that's really what kind of happened in this with Damon Jack. Damon got tired. He was exhausted in this fight. Now, Billy was tired too, but both guys, you couldn't ask for any more effort by either guy. They put on a fantastic fight. Did you score the same way? I did. Did you? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You did Jackson win it? It was close. Like I said, like I, I, I kind of had Jackson win it. I felt like he landed the harder, cleaner shots. Even though he looked exhausted, this gives me back to the Trevor Pralin situation when he fucking fought Jeremy Horn. When you look tired, and it just seems like you're laboring, you're like hunched over, and your shots are sometimes winging and not landing, and all these other things, that goes through the judge's mind. I mean, believe it or not, I believe it does. You say it doesn't, which I think you're a liar, Um, but it does. (laughs) (laughs) It just does. But if I'm a judge, I'm like, man, this guy looks like shit. Oh shit, he landed a good shot. Oh, but he only landed one or two. Okay, and the other guy hits him with some small shots, but the guy landed the hard shots. I thought Jackson landed the harder, cleaner shots, but I'm not mad. I mean, I, I get it. I understand. Like it, like I said, it, the fight could have went either way, but I had Damon winning, but I'm not mad about yeah. it. Anything else I hear right. you want to talk about? Not really. I thought that the Cody Durden versus Jake Hadley had a couple of moments in there. Mm-hmm. Great submission attempt, and, and I, you got, I got to give it up for Cody Durden. He gutted out. A nasty arm bar. Yeah. And he was in trouble with that. Uh, belly down and Jake Hadley, you know, had his moments in there. But overall, Cody Durden really fought a great fight. It, this is when you talk, like, and I know you're you're more vocal about it than I am because I, lo- I like Bisbing and I like my boy DC. But when it comes to talking jiu-jitsu. And then, but then they had Dom tonight. And even Dom, I was like. Bro, you guys got to say exactly how you guys finished this thing. And so when it came down to it, if you guys are go back and watch the the Hadley and the Durden fight, he has the belly down on the, uh, it's like a, it's like a triangle belly down pretty much. I think on this, what you've got to do though, is you've got to pull whatever hip is facing towards the sky, pull the arm up the side of up your body. That. You cannot hip down anymore because the damn fence, the not fence, but the, the floor, floor is in the way. And you're, you can't arch your back anymore because the floor stops you. But then the more you arch your back, it doesn't go anywhere because the floor is stopping you. So you turn sideways a little bit and you take that arm up your body, like towards the sky and push that and arm rotate. bar. Yeah, yep. t- push that arm bar, the elbow against your inner thigh. It's like between your nuts and your inner thigh, right in it's that like, little it's crevice. Like, it's like thinking about when you're doing a leg lock and you're sitting back with an ankle mm-hmm. lock and you see these guys sitting back, sitting back and mm-hmm. I can't go any back farther turn to the side and you have all that room well what i don't exactly not only that but then look it's no different than the way you do the normal arm in uh like a triangle arm bar you do a triangle arm bar you don't pull the arm across like into your belly button you pull it to the outside of your hip just like you saw diego do exactly exactly i'm just like and when i'm it was painful for me i was like trying to listen to them like hey why don't you guys explain (laughs) like what's going on because how can he make this tighter how can he do this and it wasn't getting done, but uh, but overall, I thought uh, Hadley tough fight. I, it was it was it was a good it was a fun fight. I don't know if I would have given it uh thirty twenty seven. They had a thirty twenty seven for Durden. I would have had yes, a 20, they did. I had twenty nine twenty. I had twenty nine twenty eight. Okay, thanks you, thank you. Uh, this uh, Sean Woodson kid, man, he he's he's just he's just long, lanky, tough to deal with, pain in the ass. He's, if I had to fight him boy, at that weight class, I'd be like, yeah, man, screw this shit. This guy's too damn. <laughs> This guy's too damn tall, long. I sparred with a guy that was how tall is he? Six three? How how tall is Sean Woodson? I think he's six two. I sparred with a guy who was six three, six four, one forty five. Six two. Jesus, yeah. man. So yeah, yeah same shit. The only way you guys can get these guys down, you can't double leg them and lift them because their toes can still get on the ground. You got to go to a, a deep, dragon. a deep ass 
So what I talk about is like, you get your head on the outside and you rotate deep, uh, you go deep ass on the backside. So I go with my forearm goes deep, almost like I'm reaching around. I'm doing like a little reach around trying to fucking grab his, his balls. But instead I'm going to his belly button. I gotta be honest, man. You gotta give the, you gotta tell him. So my hand tickle, goes, through, you get, yeah. So what you're saying, what you're saying is you gotta tickle the balls. Yeah, you gotta tickle the balls. But instead, okay. try to pretend like you're actually tickling the balls, but you're reaching up through the vagina all the way into the belly button. Okay. And then you get to the belly button. Okay. And then that's when you can lift a little bit with your legs and then dump them forward with your head because your head's on the outside. I just see a lot of people struggling to get these takedowns on these tall guys. When I was watching, uh, DC try to get the takedown against John Jones. Realistically, the only time he ever got close on the same takedown thing. is when he did the same exact takedown. And not just yeah, that, yeah. like I said, years of sparring with this kid, this kid named Reese, he's from the UK. He's fucking like 6'3", 6'4", 145. I fucking hated it because he was so fast, so athletic. I was just like, gosh, get away from it. I, let me, true story. Javier put him in one time, Reese, against, um, against Cain Velasquez in the fifth round. And Kane was exhausted because it was like kind of the beginning of camp and Kane and these Kane and Javier just wanted Kane to move his head, use his head work. All he wanted to do is because he was sparring. I think he was going to fight uh junior for the second time or the third time. And he goes, I just want you to move your head. Don't get hit. Move your head. Keep your hands up. Move your head. And Reese was just peppering him. <laughs> and finally, Kane got so mad. He fucking ran across the ring, just grabbed him, threw him down and just started stomping on him with his foot between the ropes, trying to hit him, trying to just fucking so pissed. Poor Reese. I felt so bad for Reese, man. Reese was so good. So good. And then he, we, we got him a job at a nightclub and he got, he got a girlfriend and next thing you know, we never saw him again. That was it. That was the end of Reese. That was the end of Reese. He was yeah, so fucking talented. What happens? Talented. This is what women do. This is why you they don't get End one. your careers. Yeah. Yeah. Sons of bitches. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's all right, that's gonna wrap up the, the UFC. UFC talk. That's gonna wrap up the UFC talk. Let's move right along. What are we talking about now, Dave? What do we got? You guys want one or PFL? I'll uh, let's talk about PFL. I'm gonna let's be go honest, guys. I, I watched uh the Marcus Almeida, which is Buchecha, and we watched uh I watched Musumechi and I watched uh that was it. <laughs> that was I'll it. I'll tell you what. So we got, we got to the Marcus Almeida mm -hmm. Buchecha fight against Rug Rug. A lot, lot of, lot of things going on it, but man, those guys, they, they fought their asses off. They were both swinging at, at a certain point. Buchecha was looking like a brawler. Damn. He was swinging, going after him, and he just didn't get him down in time to do anything with it. He's but, an athlete, man. The kid's an well, athlete. I'll tell you what. The kid's good. He's got balls, and got I balls. love the fact that he's an actual true, real, like top world class MMA, or not MMA, but a grappler, BJJ guy. trying to become an MMA guy. Look, yeah. there's only been a handful of guys that have done it and had success. There's a guy named uh, Andre Gaval. Everyone knows who he is, of course. But he fought MMA for a while. He did. He had yeah, some, he, some he wasn't success. Successful. He had some success. He wasn't he bad. Was not, he was. Then not he fought another man. another one of my buddies, Luke Stevenson, and he's a he was a fantastic jiu jitsu guy. He's a tattoo artist now in San Francisco. But he uh, but he, you know, he was a fantastic jiu jitsu guy. Fucking awesome. I mean, outside of that. Give me other guys that have been world class. You, you got Adolfo Vieira. You've got um, uh, well, Damian you Maya. Go you've got Jacare. 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 Yeah, Jacare was. You've got uh, Nino Shrembury. Uh, who were some other guys that were back in the day were considered like to be world class? I know. I know. There's. I know. I know. Everyone's gonna be like, "You guys, you fucking idiots! You forgot this well, person." <laughs> well, hold on. There's a there, hold on. There was a lot of world class. I mean, let's be honest. Okay, Marcelo Garcia. Yeah, but never fought MMA. He fought, yes, he did. Not like on a not not a UFC or or Strike Force. Well, he, fought, or, he fought in Japan and he lost. Yeah, where, where'd you in Pride? No, it wasn't Pride. I there you go. It wasn't it good was. enough. Jeez. Jeez. Sorry, man. Pull up, uh, Sorry. Dave. Pull up, pull up, Marcelo Garcia. I got. I got to remember where he fought because he did fight and he lost. And because MMA is different than grappling. I, mean, I, I get it. I get it. Look, and that's look. we saw tonight. Boxing is different than MMA. Okay, look. At, there you go. Owen won. And what, where did he fight? It was K1, K1 Heroes. Heroes. Okay, I'll give him some love. Yeah. I'll give him some okay, love. Okay, there you go. Dr. See? Stoppage, though. Not a real TKO. Dr. Stoppage. Trust me. It was bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it was bad. That sucks. He was getting pounded. On I like Marcelo, man. He's a dog. The, the X guard didn't work quite the same. Yeah, but man, he is fucking really good. Oh, good. dude, in grappling, yeah. he was he was a magician. 
One of my longtime good buddies named Paul Schreiner, he uh, he trained with me, got me ready for a lot of my fights. Really good jiu-jitsu guy. Kind of like a nerdy guy. I had the dark glasses before the dark glasses were cool. He'd come stumbling in, you know, and just train, you know, a little bit bigger than me, but he was like, he just fucked me up. <laughs> he would just, John, he would destroy me. And I was like, every day I'd leave the gym going, damn, if this guy's as good as him, I'm fucked. <laughs> Because <laughs> there was, I used him a lot for um, for uh, my first fight in the UFC, Gerald Strebet, and okay. oh no, I use him a lot too for Hermes Franca because those were my first two fights, and they were all top level jiu jitsu guys apparently, and I wasn't quite that level just yet. I was like a purple belt, and man, he would just would come in and just wreck shop on me. Just remember, uh, there was a kid named Cameron too out of Half Gracie's. I can't remember Cameron's last name, so it was Cameron Dave Camarillo. Uh, uh, Paul Schreiner. Fuck, we had some really good guys that used to come in and train. Man, they were so good. I was like, damn, these guys, man. If these guys, I'm fighting because I didn't know. I never really understood the level of of jujitsu because the only guy I'd ever really trained with was BJ. I was like, okay, this guy's the best. These guys weren't that far behind him. And I'm like, man, <laughs> these guys that I'm fighting, like you're everyone's Hermes Frank is this, and Gerald Strubitz was like the new guy because of Eddie Bravo. Yeah. And it just was like, man, yeah, yeah. Man, they were tough. They fucked me up all the time. <laughs> it was great. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go PFL. Main event was Jesus Pinedo against Bubba Jenkins. This, I thought this was Bubba Jenkins' uh, moment to shine, yeah. and it did not happen. It did not happen. Nope. John Jesus, Lee. Pinedo is, Jesus Pinedo is better than people understand, yep. better than I understood, because <laughs> he had a great win in his last fight, and this one, he's good. The dude can fight. John, he right. couldn't stop takedowns in his last fight. No. And this fight, he was like he was a fucking NC2A champ. NC2A, thank you. And you and I sat here on the midweek show going, ah, oh, man, this is Bubba's fight to lose. You can take him down, control the top. I bet that was because of what I saw yeah. before. I thought, oh, yeah. he's going to get taken down, man. Bubba's, you know, as long as Bubba doesn't try to be the, you know, the striker throughout the whole day, you can start with the striking, but go to your strength. Yeah. Take him down. Put him on the ground. Use your ground and pound. No, I want to go back though. But like Bubba, he's he's crossed that threshold though. He's not afraid to get hit anymore. No, he took some fucking nasty shots, John, in this fight. He took some nasty shots. He kept coming forward. There was moments he just planted his feet and threw back, and that's what saved him in some of this. In some of this from the fight getting stopped earlier. I mean, that's what saved him a little bit. He just got to learn. You got a little bit would have been better if you got in space and moved away. Yeah, yeah, but it's, look, not always though, John. When you're rocked a little bit and you start no, trying to make space, always. that's when you get hit and clipped. All right, all right. Look, look, Jesus Pineda. I, I gotta, I gotta be honest, man. I owe you an apology, brother. You outpunted the coverage. You fought a damn good fight. You fought a damn good fight. Moving on to the finals. Congratulations to you, my man. But you know who else fought a damn good fight? Joshua Silvera. Yes, Holy shit. It must be the name Joshua because that's my full name. Don't ever call me that. <laughs> my full name is Joshua. Mr. Joshua, that's what you guys call me now from now on in the comment section. It's going to be Mr. Joshua only. That's it. Mr. Joshua. S Joshua Silvera. Woo. Uh, it was nasty. Got a hold of the head and it was lights out. Boom, boom. Knee, knee. Right up the middle. Boy, once he did it, it was goodbye. It was. He hit him with a flush knee, then backed him up to the fence. Boom, boom. A couple boom, more boom. knees. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. I was so surprised. I was like, I expected him to try to get more of the, you know, be a little more aggressive on the takedowns. Once he clinched on the head, threw the knees up the middle, rocked him, finished up with more knees. And then the other fight, the next fight, Gable Braga with Chris Wade. What yeah, is going that was, We talked about it and said that was a 50 50 fight, though. It was not a 50 50 fight, John. Gabriel Braga owned every second, every minute, every, every time when that bell went off. Chris was trying to work on certain stuff. He had some moments landing big shots, but Braga was the one that took the shot, came right back, took the shot, came right back. That's really what it came down yeah, to. Man. Braga's got a chin on him. He's got a beard on him. He's still undefeated. I think he's what, 11 or four, I think he might be 14. No. Can you look up what Braga's record is there, buddy? 14? Tell me 14. 12. 12, 12, sorry, 12 and 0, 11, 14 in the middle there somewhere. Okay, but John, he he's good, man. He made weight. He came in shape. He looked fantastic. Well, yeah, he's, he's got to win against Pinedo. Yeah. Well, the two of them so, are in the finals now, so they're going to find exactly. out who's going 
We're going to get it so back now. It's, it's, a, it's a rematch that we'll see if he can do it for a second time. Mm-hmm. And then you got Impa versus Hamlet. Look, uh, Impa just, I don't want to butcher his last name, Kasanginang, Kasanginai, or whatever is how Kasangane. you say it. But, <laughs> John, you, it you is. Back me up. Everyone in the comments calls you out. You just say it really fast and hope no one, call, no one notices. I've noticed just, it for years I, I now. Go, I just on, never on said this anything. one. Kasangane, I go, I go off of John Anik saying, yeah. well, Impa Kasangane. So that, that's where I'm going. Well, this is in the PFL. If, PSL, I gonna, if so. I'm going to listen to anyone from someone that was at the UFC, I always go to Anik. Well, good thing you didn't, good thing you didn't listen to, um, to the PFL commentary because one guy had it one way, one guy had it the other. They weren't on the same page. <laughs> well, but, uh, that can happen too. Impa with the beautiful shot, finished him against the fence. Nicely done. Hamlet just goes straight down, falls out. Keone Diggs just didn't live up to the performance, buddy. He just kept getting taken down, got dominated from the wrestling position. And we talked about in the midweek show, the way he can lose this fight is by getting taken down, by getting dominated. That's exactly what happened. Espinoza came out with a great game plan. Smart. Press him to the fence. Look, Diggs just, even when he did turn him off, he didn't make the space. Bro, you're the boxer. You're the one with the heavier hands. He wasn't the faster fighter, though. So on the feet, he was struggling a little bit because he's got the dogs in him with the big hands. I call these, you know, call these dogs. He had those all in him, but it just wasn't enough. But look, all the fights, all these other fights I'm going to get out into. I'm going to give some love, a little credit. I know he lost, but he should have won. I had uh, my buddy Chuck Campbell at the very bottom. He should have won. Um, I had him win in 29-28. And uh, even, I actually even had it closer because he trains with me at AKA Chuck Campbell against uh, Billy uh, I can, Elikana, Elikana. I'm not going to say I, that. I had, I, had Cam, I had Campbell win in the fight. I thought he got robbed. This was to see who got into the next season's uh, tournament. Tournament. But there's one guy on this whole thing that I want to give some love to is this that this dad gene guy. This kid's good. He's fast. Keep an eye out on him. He is fast, explosive, good on the feet, fights relaxed. Uh, he's got good kicks, good hands, good boxing. Uh, a couple times on the takedown defense, very impressive. And the fight was short and quick, but it, all those things were shown right off the bat. And Omar was very explosive, just didn't – just the timing, the speed – Keep an eye on this kid, man. Thad Jean, he, he was good. He was really good. Fantastic. Uh, Yanez, she had some good moments. She made a mistake. Made she, a mistake. she got the takedown. She made a mistake, got, got pushed backwards. Look, if you, if someone opens, if they open their guard and you back out or you get, like, you're starting to pretend like you're, not pretend, but you start to feel like you're getting swept, don't stay on your knees. Get all the way up to your feet, to your like feet. back out completely. She kind of rocked back to her heels a little bit, and then she kind of tried to come forward onto her knees again instead of just standing up and backing away. And the girl just sat right into her lap and got got right to the top position. Just ended up being on top. And then she, when she got to the top position on the front headlock, circled to the back, got the choke, got the got the rear naked, and it was over. But uh, that was pretty much wrapping up the whole uh, PFL there as well. But Dave, you got some news for us, right? You got any news for us? I I got a couple. Uh, I got a couple of stories I want to get your thoughts on. Um. First one is uh, Usman saying that he would love to fight Wonderboy, saying that that's one of the guys that mm-hmm. um, he never got to fight. It was kind of the top of the top of the heap when he was kind of their champion, and that's somebody he would like to fight now. Wonderboy comes out and says, "Yeah, like let's uh, let's do it." What do you think about that? Well, I think it's a little weird because Wonderboy came out earlier and said, "Look, I'm tired of fighting all these wrestlers." <laughs> that's but exactly what I was gonna go, but you know, John, I mean, like. You would agree, right? Like, if I'm at this stage of my career, I'm 40 years old. Look, Usman's my step. If I'm trying to get to the title, you have to take that fight. Who do you have there? You have Usman, you've got Kobe, and you've got... Um, Every, I, I agree with you. They're everything all wrestlers. Is, everything is a matter of, if you're Stephen Thompson, what do you want? What do you want? Do you want a shot at the title? Because if you want a shot at the title, take the fight against Kamaro and beat him. Because now you're putting yourself in that, in yeah. that position. If you don't really care about it, the shot at the title, then I wouldn't take the fight with Kamaro if you don't want to fight wrestlers. Yeah. I mean, because, look, I'm going to be honest, and, and there's no shade towards Kamaro. I mean, he has already kind of made a lot of money. I don't know where his mental is, you know? I mean, like, he, I, you could tell, like, some of the relief is like, look, I'm not the champ right now. Let me, I'm going to have fun. I'm making, I'm, I've made good money. I'm good. I'm making good money now still as I speak. Um, the Steven Thompson fight does make sense for him if he wants to try to get back into that title shot. But the guys that are ahead of Steven Thompson, none of those guys Steven should want to fight except for Kamaro. 
Kamaro's getting older. He's been the champion for a while. He's had some knee problems. Like, there's moments there where you could potentially catch him. It's going to be a hard fight. It's going to be a hard fight no matter what, no matter who you fight. But you've got guys, um, you've got uh, the bully. He's going to come out. He's going to try to just take you down, grind on you. He's stand up. has gone a long ways, but he will do what he does. He will press the pace, get in your face, and he will take you down. And then you've got uh, Colby, who's already matched up right now. And uh, who else is there in that top? There's one other person. Who is it? That one. There's one the other UFC's. person that skyrocketed into that. Into Bilal? That thing. You've got, yeah, you've got Bilal. Oh, no, then Burns is out right now. His shoulder's coming around. Chemayev's out, too. He's fighting at 85 now. Chemayev's 185. Yeah, so um, Shavkat is probably not a guy you want to fight either right now. Um, well, I, w- I would actually save the Shavkat to match him up with. Kelvin again. Well, Shavkat's calling out Usman. He's like, hey, man, where mm-hmm. you at? Which is crazy because mm-hmm. they train together at Kill Cliff. I see that. Wow. No, I get it. I yeah, get it. Kinda. They kind of do and they kind of don't. But, yeah. you know, so I don't know. It is what it is. It is what it, it is. is. But I, I, I like, I actually think if I'm going to pick anybody, if you want to get to the title, Kamaru Usman and, and Steven Thompson, if I'm the UFC, I'm like, look, Kamaru potentially going to be able to take him down and grind him out. Like he does, you know, he can do. He's very capable of doing. He's done to so many people. But on the feet, Steven could catch him. And we got a little bit of a Wonder Boy story. We got a little something going there on, go. something to build up. So, you know, but then that, that was, or sign it, sign MVP and put MVP ooh, in Wonder Boy. They might be That's holding out part. on that, just to be honest. I mean, look, we know if MVP is sitting first front row next to Dana White and everybody else at, at these fights, at pay-per-view events, they've already got something pretty much kind of locked in. They've oh, got. Yeah. They at least got a deal in front of him, Which and he's kind of already likes the deal. Good for him. Yeah. Like, I mean, look, good for him. Good for him. Uh, next, next. Uh, what else you got for us, Dave? All right. The last thing I have for you guys is Nunez saying, um, the part of the retirement was to do with like um, like nerve damage she was having. Um, she was saying that um, I cannot kick as much anymore. My legs have nerve damage. From over the years, oh, there's something playing. Uh, from over the years, so things are starting to get harder for me. My, oh god, this thing is like playing audio right now. <laughs> um, my shoulders need rest. My knees, even my teeth need work after getting hit in the mouth so many times. I don't see myself back in a cage anytime soon. I am looking forward to a break. My body, my body needs us. What did we just, just talk about the other day, John? <laughs> people actually got people caught into the comment section saying, "Man, I'm surprised Josh was so upfront about his his experiences after fighting." What am I? What am I to hold? I, I got to let you guys know. I got to let all all the fans know. I got to let the fighters know. I got to let everyone know. Don't think that because oh, I made all this money, like all this money that John Jones has made, all this money that DC's made, all this money that all these fighters have made. Look at how much money NFL players, basketball players, and look how many times they're broke. Have you guys not seen the 30 for 30 broke? Uh, What is it called? It's called broke, right? I want to think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Go watch that. It's a 30 for 30. It's sad. It's sad. Guys like Andre Risen who made, you know, over $100 million broke. Dead broke. You got all these other football players, basketball players, you know, athletes, Olympic athletes, all people. Thinking it's going to last forever. It doesn't. It doesn't last forever. I mean, I, look, I'm going to be honest, man. Like, there's a lot of times where I, I can't stop thinking about what's coming next. John knows. And yeah. people, you I know I know people are like, I, I constantly think about it. Because even though I still feel young, I know I'm not young, but I still have 40 more years, hopefully, God willing, I have 40 more years of my <laughs> life. See, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, but John, you've, you've got to be thinking, you've got, to, you've got at least another 25, 20 to 25, maybe, no. you know? Yeah, you I'm know, realistic I've, I've got some love for you, man. I'm gonna. I appreciate you know, that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you, the reality is, is that what she's going through right now, and I'm, she's not even 40 years old yet. And as she stops right. training, and like I but said the other day, this is this is what, and you, you and I have talked about this with you, and and I talk about it with a lot of fighters. And what people don't understand is when you when you use your body to make income through sport okay Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of ways and you can do that through you know all these different varieties of sports but when it's a combat sport or a contact sport you take abuse that you eventually live with your entire life yeah 
you know, and, and so you, you take a look, you know, Josh, I've had five knee surgeries, three ACLs. I've had three neck surgeries and I didn't fight. <laughs> okay. All I did was train. <laughs> Okay, you know, when you, you look at it and be honest about it, and I've had, you know, so many different surgeries and stuff, and every day, I fucking hurt. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I get headaches all the time. That is just part of life, and you get used to it to a point because it becomes the norm, but it's not, you know, what everyone thinks it's so easy, you know, when she's sitting there saying, you know, I got to get my, my teeth fixed because I can't bite down the right way. You've been there. How many times have you been there? I've been yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. I've had my front front teeth, you know, knocked out. I've had my fucking, you know, jaw fucking dislocated to the point where Oof. you can't bite, you know? Okay. And it's like these things, it's when they fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want the air quotes because it ain't fixed. No. It's just not killing you. No, it's a band-aid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's a band-aid. I feel bad. I feel bad for it. Hey, it God damn, if you know, if you want to come back sometime, Amanda, I would love to see you back. But if you don't, no need. No need. Be smart with your money. You have enough for the rest of your life if do you're you? smart. That's the thing. Do you? It depends on how yeah, you are with does. it. She you know? Does. No, what smart. I'm saying though is, is look, we all said the same smart. thing about also the same thing about Andre Rise and all these other athletes that have millions and millions. If you're smart. You know, and that's what I'm saying. Like my point is though, is that we think it's going to last forever. Like it's funny. 10 years ago, I had a conversation with my cousin who is, he's brilliant, man. The kid just, he, he just knows how to make money. And back then he's like, look, and the way that I see that, the way that I see the dollar going, the way I see the world economy going, he's like, you're going to need by the time we're our age now, he's like, by the time we're 45 and 50, you're going to need $10 million to retire comfortably for the rest of your life. That's if you don't work. Like if you continue to work, then okay, then that's different. But if you yeah. decide that you want to retire at 45 and 50, he's like, you're gonna need $10 million in the bank to live the rest of your life, depending on whatever it is you have. If you've made that kind of money, you have a house that's worth a certain amount of money. You have a car, mm -hmm. you've got, you know, you've got kids, you've got their colleges, all these things. You're gonna need that amount of money. And look, I'm going through this right now with my grandmother. She's 95 years old. You don't know. Here's what people don't realize. You don't know when you're going to pass. So you don't well, know. I have an idea. Hold on. I have an idea. Cause if I, if I reach a certain point, I'm done. <laughs> I'm stepping <laughs> off the cliff. But my point is, is that you, you don't know. So how do you budget for something you don't know the end game to? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Stop. So everyone's like, Oh, well, you know, I have all this money. And like, yeah. And then everyone's like, Oh, you're going to leave money to your kids. I don't even know how fucking long I'm going to live. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't know. So how do you budget for something when you don't know the end? That's the hardest part. So for these athletes and these fighters, sure, we may all go a little earlier because we pushed our body to the limit. We built our heart. Our heart's a muscle. We built it up like a big muscle. Now it's, we tend to later on in life have heart failure because we pushed our body so hard. We built yeah. our, the muscles built so much. Now your, your body, your muscle is, needs a lot more, it needs to pump more blood. Just can't do it anymore. And just, you can't supply your whole body. So you're going through these. I constantly think about shit like this. I always think about all this stuff. Okay. How much money, how much life, how much do I need for this, this, and this I'm on it, man. Nonstop. I started thinking about this shit when I was 32, 33 years old going, not even that, maybe younger, 28, 29. I just never stop. I never stop thinking about it. How can I make more money? How can I do this? It's nonstop. And I've told myself, and I'm, you're probably the same way. Cause you'll be working on your fucking farm until you die. But I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not going to no. stop working no matter Never. what it is. Even if I got to get a job, Never. even if I got to go back to doing construction and roofing, I don't give a shit. Okay. I'm yeah. going to do something from the rest of my, I'm not going to just sit around the house and fucking let myself wither away. I've seen too many of my fam, like my family members. They just decided I'm going to retire and then they go play golf in the morning and they're done for the rest of the day. And they just aged. They aged within, they just aged. It was happened so fast. They got brittle. There's no muscle on them anymore. And just there, I don't want that for myself. I'm already kind of like lost a lot of muscle because I don't train as much anymore. But this after that, once this move's done, man, once I'm fully unpacked, <clears throat> my fat ass is getting back in the gym. Let's go. It's gonna be it's gonna be big Josh Thompson again, baby. Big, big Josh JT. Thompson. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up. Go to WayneInMerch.com. WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our apparel over there. And I keep saying Dave's going to put up some new designs, going to contact the, you know, our distributor and all this stuff. But 
Dave's been slacking on his job. So we'll try to get Dave to light a fire on his ass and we'll get that going. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for supporting us. Continue to support us. Go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and support us over there. Subscribe. It is free. Thank you guys so much. And John, take us away. I want to apologize to Dave for being a slacker. <laughs> and uh, thank you. I apologize, Dave, that we, we said you were a slacker over the Accepted. air. Accepted. And, Accepted. Uh, and uh, exactly. you're not a slacker, Dave. We love you. Apology so, accepted. For everybody out there, thanks for tuning in. We will see you.